So as you can see on the timeline, um, this portion of episode 20 of uh, Pop the Balloon is the most replayed portion. And in a second, you'll, you'll see why. Like, this is a hot ass mess. It, this is my third time watching this particular segment. I've sent it to a bunch of people. Um, but I wanted to also take the opportunity to um, give my thoughts as well. So uh, let's watch it. I'm going to pause it periodically. And uh, yeah. All right. Hello, welcome in. What's your name? Dorian. Dorian, how old are you? I'm 27. Okay, and what do you do? Um, I work for a Fortune 50 um, company as an insurance agent. I also rap. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh so first and foremost, uh, what stuck out to me is she, she didn't actually say her job or, you know, uh, what exactly it is that she does and is qualified to do. She more so highlighted the fact that it was a Fortune 50 company. Um, usually when people do that, they, they're usually working for like an MLM or, you know, some other bullshit job, or they might have a legitimate job and uh, are highlighting the prestige um, so they can, you know, add extra, I don't know, extra gold stars to their evaluation. Um, but that should be a red flag, fellas. Uh, a woman like that is usually vain. And as you'll see in a second, um, a lot of what she says is very cliche, uh, very predictable to an extent. Uh, now, uh, I know you see rap. What else do you do for fun? Um, for fun, I like to travel a lot. I like to stamp my passport. I'm very adventurous, skydiving, jet skiing, whatever the world brings us. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is... Wow. Damn. So, um, I, was, I was actually disappointed by some of the dudes in this. Um, I think it was a great opportunity, as we'll get to, to uh, talk to women through her. Um, and I think, you know, like I've talked about, often like men aren't conditioned to be okay with women's hurt feelings right so you'll see a lot of the dudes tiptoe around what needs to be said to kind of get her um even though she's not going to be receptive but to tell her the truth about why all these balloons popped uh, in rapid succession but like i said a lot of her stuff is very cliche rapper adventurous outgoing skydiving like you start hearing some of these themes come up and more importantly than ever anything like her presentation as soon as she came out was horrendous it was very um i know people use the term first play energy as kind of like a good thing but for me it's a bad thing it's it's somebody usually who lacks self-awareness and who believes that they're the star of their own movie and they treat everybody else as co-stars at best and npcs at worst but yeah let's move forward Okay. Y'all don't like to travel? I guess not. <laughs> now, what are some things you look for in a man? What do I look for in a man? I really like an outgoing guy. I'm a very outgoing person, respectful, um, emotionally intelligent. And I also like a man that makes as much money as me or more. Mm, okay. Exactly. Nice. Get the bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, what are some deal breakers? Deal breakers. <sighs> Felonies. But the felonies, as far as sexual, mm. violent, small penis. <laughs> and, you know, like that particular part, um, the fact that the first thing she said was felonies, it kind of gives you a, a peek into what she's used to, or at least the, the world um, of intergender relationships that she's familiar with, right? She's familiar with uh, men with a criminal past. And because of that, the distinction she makes is what kind of criminal past as opposed to do you have a criminal past? Um, so that, that should be an immediate balloon pop. <laughs> but again, I, I think, you know, as men, we're conditioned to be a, a bit more 
uh, lenient or at least willing to be considerate for women. Uh, but, you know, some of these nuances, I think we should start paying attention to. And then the fact that she, you know, she closed it out with small penis. Uh, it lets you know, you know, what her priorities are. Uh, it lets you know that um, she is comfortable publicly uh, being sexual, uh, shaming men, et cetera, especially on a first impression basis. Like I say all the time, a woman's first impression is the best she's going to be. It's the best she's going to look. It's the best she's going to act. Um, so you have to, you have to uh, hold that impression in particular to a very high standard. It's only going to go downhill from there, as you'll see in this in this episode. Deal breaker. <laughs> All right, so Period. we did get. I'm just being honest. We did get a couple pop balloons. That's fine. Let's go ahead and they see what they did pop in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, your name and age. And That's another thing that I want to pop out. Uh, <laughs> I said pop out. Another thing I want to point out, and it happens a lot on the show, um, <clears throat> because. <laughs> Because women are so unfamiliar typically with rejection, um, there's usually like a cognitive dissonance that they go into, whether it's, um, you know, it's okay. They don't know what they're missing. They're going to regret it, whatever the case may be. Um, when the reality is the only thing they would potentially regret is not having the opportunity to sleep with you because based on your presentation, that's the best thing you have to offer, right? Or at, at, at best... Uh, what you have to offer is being a, rehabil a rehabilitation center for one of those broken types of men that you are used to. And it seems like she's also a broken woman. So there's there, there's probably a bit more compatibility there, which is why uh, what she's probably drawn to and what's probably drawn to her, uh, you know, creates this vicious cycle of confirmation bias with her thinking that she's God's gift to men because she's God's gift to these types of men, right? And she never has to actually uh, face uh, what's wrong with her and who she was, she's going to have to become for the life that she claims to want. Um, and it's really, it's really sad to watch. And the fact that there's still balloons unpopped is, is a testament to, like I said, some of the grace that we give men. Because the male version of her walking out to a group of women would have been immediately popped and eviscerated. Why you ended up popping your balloon? Uh, my name's Dante. I'm 25. <laughs> and why'd you pop Dante? Don't don't get on the internet, bro. Uh, spot something stain in your little dress. I you was in the bag you? drunk, so whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. You feel me? I it's fine. It's a I wish I didn't have to pause this so much but like there's so many bad things here he pointed out a very good thing which I, I think you know as men we can do a better job being uh cognizant of and and observant of like her presentation you know she focused on the macro she focused on my hair is done my nails are done I have a expensive outfit and because it's expensive it's nice whether or not it's stylish whether or not it's appropriate etc um and he pointed out, for instance, she had spots on her dress, which is a very good indicator that she is not uh, self-aware, right? There, there's a fine line between self-conscious and self-aware, but she's not self-aware. And, you know, sometimes that manifests externally with things like hygiene and things like stains on clothes and things like that. Um, but most of the time it manifests like with behavior and character and presentation and your disposition, et cetera. And on top of that, you know, there were drinks in the back, apparently, and uh, she indulged and she is using the fact that she indulged as almost like a um, explanation for her current behavior or current disposition, which the fact that she indulged alone is terrible. And then the fact that she is comfortable using her indulgement or abuse of that substance as a explanation, a cop out, a, um, to validate her behavior, it, I think is even the bigger issue, right? Cause it, it, it'll never be because of her. It'll always be because of another person, a substance, 
something. It'll always be external, right? And that, you know, that's a clue into, you know, the type of individual you're dealing with and what you can expect moving forward. But uh, yeah, yeah, she she could have just you know, said, hey, I, you know, something happened, but like she's proudly an alcoholic, <laughs> it seems like. And, uh, you know, that alone should have gotten all the balloons popped. So, again, men are more lenient than we give ourselves credit of being. $300 dress. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, it's the $300 dress. My bad. I got a little makeup on it. Just to show like you paying attention to care and stuff like that. You feel mm. me? You're trying to be presentable. Just that, yeah. Okay. You feel me? That's Respect all. that. You're pretty. Pretty. Mm. Gracias. Mm-hmm. Now, is he someone that's your type? Um, no, I'm not going to. Where are you from? From Michigan. He's from Michigan and he has a cowboy hat on. No, I can see if he's from Texas or something. I feel like Southern boys wear the cowboy hats. I'm not a big fan of the cowboy hat. Y'all are so mean. They got country boys in Michigan. <laughs> Anyways, next. <laughs> name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. My name is Ryan. I'm 26. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. And I think you just had an unwelcoming demeanor. And that was it. We know why. I mean, you know, everybody popped their balloon, so I might as well be honest. I mean. And, you know, I want, I want us to take a step back for a second, you know, because I think oftentimes we, we hyper focus on um, the individual that's being critiqued. In this case, it's the young lady. Um, but, you know, I think it's also important we have a conversation about, you know, human nature and reflexes and stuff. And the reality, especially for women being so unfamiliar with um, rejection and also in a sense being traumatized by early childhood rejection, whether rejection by a father, rejection by a mother, rejection by family members, rejection by society, it creates this hardened belligerent demeanor that we see. Like it's, uh, at a certain point, she uh, talks about how St. Louis, where she's from, shaped her disposition. Right. So I, I think it's important whether or not we choose to accept that type of person into our life on an intimate level. I think it's important, at least as black folks, that we're cognizant of the um, circumstances that create this disposition in people and um, hopefully, you know, uh, coordinate our efforts to eliminate those circumstances so we can in turn eliminate um, these this these unpleasant dispositions that we see. And like uh, Ryan pointed out, it's uh, uh, unfortunately, I, I think often it's going to be dismissed as it's because I'm dark skin, for instance, or it's because I'm a black woman, for instance, as opposed to it's because there's a certain or there's certain characteristics and there's certain personality traits that um, you exhibit that unfortunately has been associated with black women, black men. Um, and it's off putting ultimately. Right. So I think, you know, as a community, we need to be a bit more critical and introspective about the role that society as a whole, our community in particular, plays in creating these people and, and, and their, their, their need to uh, defend themselves, their, their need to be on attack mode. Like she said, you guys popped my balloon, so she already feels rejected, so now she's going to... Um, either eliminate herself literally figuratively from the running from the competition or just be completely closed off to uh, considering any of the legitimate critiques that are going to come her way. I, I don't want to get into it, but I can understand why you would think I have an unwelcoming demeanor, but you're very handsome, Ryan. I love your dimples, but I'm actually very much a sweetheart. Next. Okay. <laughs> Name and age and why you ended up popping? Chris, 27. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't do those skydiving, you know, I'm, I'm scared of heights. Mm. And so I had, I had problems in my past. With my last girl, she was tweaking with me because I didn't want to do the little, with the, uh, the Superman thing in Vegas. We didn't have broke up over that. Oh. Yeah, it was bad. Okay. 
Okay. And you said your name is? Chris. Chris, so you popped my balloon because you don't like skydiving. You said you like doing adventurous stuff, skydiving, what'd you say, jumping out of airplanes, uh, roller coasters, I don't do that. I mean, but she asked me what I like to do, she didn't ask you what you like to do. But I mean, I understand if you don't like skydiving, we could have went on a nice dinner date. You're very handsome, I love yes, the Balabas's pants, I got a couple pair myself. Mm. I like the outfit, you know, I don't think you, I think you're going to regret popping your balloon. But I understand if you don't want to <laughs> go skydiving, everybody need a woman to get them out their comfort zone. So now, apart from her saying, you know, the skydiving, whatever it is, is she someone that is your type? Yeah, for sure. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I like the demeanor. I ain't gonna lie. Thank you. That ain't a problem with me at all. Mm -hmm. I like the demeanor. I wouldn't make you skydive. If you said no, I would take no for an this, this is This is the part that pissed me off the most during this particular episode uh, when he said, you know, he liked the demeanor. And unfortunately, you know, the reason why some of these conversations we're trying to have uh, to improve our women um, sometimes falls on deaf ears is because there are a lot of these types of men in our community. And these types of men in particular, I would categorize them as um, adult infants, right? Like uh, earlier in the show, somebody asked, you know, what is something you do that reminds you of your uh, childhood self? And he particularly brought up, you know, he plays basketball. He probably is one of the hoop dreams guys. Um, and then later on, he talked about how he smokes a lot of, you know, ganja. And, you know, even in his presentation, his, his countenance, you can kind of, you can kind of gauge what type of dude he is. I think he's like 27. Um, but he, he, he's one of those people that uh, comes off as very unserious about life. And those men usually um, have a really good relationship, dysfunctional, but functional in a sense, relationship with these types of women. Because there's there's a, a male-female dynamic in the inverse, right? She's the protector. Um, she's the provider, I'm sorry. And he gets to cosplay as a protector because he's a man. Um, but for all intents and purposes, she takes care of him. And, you know, he even mentioned briefly that he grew up seeing his mom do it all. So he kind of expects that from a woman. Um, and, 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 you know, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of the times, because there are so many of these men, a lot of the critiques we're levying towards women don't get through because it's, it's like, at least like Chris likes me. Like Chris is always going to be there to validate my desire for companionship as opposed to my desire for leadership. Like oftentimes those two things are conflated. And the worst part is I think a lot of these guys, they also, uh, in a sense, validate their masculinity. And I've talked about this before. They validate their masculinity by their ability to tame, conquer, deal with, maintain relationships with these types of women, right? These, these cantankerous, belligerent, uh, unpleasant women, right? It, it's this idea, and you hear it from women often that, you know, uh, he or she is mean to everybody else, but they're nice to me, right? I, I'm the one who knows how to get the pit bull to calm down, right? And unfortunately, a lot of men have internalized that as well because those are the types of mothers we had, right? So growing up, you know, we thought when we did something that she liked, whether it was something we did to entertain her because she doesn't know what a man is, so she can't even recognize productive qualities in, in, in me, so maybe it's a dance that I did, or I'm the popular, but well-dressed kid in school, something that we do to make her happy. Um, and we take that into our relationships later in life with women. And it's just about satiating that immediate uh, gratification for the woman, right? We, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about our sexual prowers, um, our uh, stylishness, consumerism, right? Like she brought up his pants. These are elements, these are telltale signs of being um, hyper uh, a, a hyper consumer, which is a problem in our community in particular. Um, but yeah, because these men exist, um, she'll never she'll never actually have to face the music, unfortunately, right? And and you know, even in her saying, for instance, you you're gonna regret this. Um, for that type of man, yeah, he will regret it because he, she's the best he can do, right? answer 
Okay. Yeah, but okay. you can follow my Instagram. I think I can get you to skydive. You think so? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel a little vibe here. You want that balloon back? He don't gotta take his balloon back. We not begging. Let's go to the next. Oh, no. We're not begging, <laughs> but he looks like he's feeling you, girl. He it's looks cool. like he's feeling If you don't want to skydive, I understand, but you gotta get out your comfort zone. You gotta explore different things. You gotta enjoy your life. You young, so. Hey, you ain't lying. Yeah. You're good. We gonna move on then. <laughs> All right, your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. My name is John, I'm 31. Mm -hmm. And I popped my balloon because you came out a little aggressive. You feel me? I like femininity. I'm not saying you not feminine, but your demeanor, maybe it's the liquor, you feel me? But No. And I think we're from the same city, and I'm mm -mm. not trying to date no women from that. So. Oh, you You know, another thing that I think is interesting, I think, you know, because of that programming, we also default to making excuses for women as well, right? Like we, and I've been accused of this as well when I talk about the black community and, and white supremacy and things like that, um, which in my opinion is completely different. But because we aren't conditioned to socialize, to see women as bad people, uh, we see women at best as victims of their circumstance. Um, in this case, that circumstance was liquor. You know, from a white supremacy standpoint, that circumstance is poverty, her city, whatever the case may be. My position has always been for us to be more ethical in that distribution of empathy and distribution of grace. Um, but uh, as you can see here, uh, you know, they, they, they know something is wrong. Some of them are able to articulate what's wrong, but they're not able to tell her, right? Because they know it's going to go on deaf ears or they know that... Um, they know that it's going to come back, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to watch, but this is the reality of our community. It's, it's, you know, it's magnified, I think, because of this platform, I think, because of these type of personalities. But there are some commonalities that you'll see even in your everyday life, observing Black men and Black women. From Indianapolis? From Indiana. Oh, my so. gosh, I love that. So, first of all... What side of Indianapolis are you from? From the east side. What part? Uh, Arlington. You from Arlington, like Forty yeah. Six. Forty Six in Arlington. All right, shout out to the east side of Indianapolis. Shout out. If you're from Indianapolis, you know why I'm like I am the way I am. I'm from east side. I mean, aggressive is crazy. Femininity is crazy. I feel like my hair is done, my nails is I'm done. I'm not saying you're not feminine. I said, but you came out a little aggressive. And Did it was I cuss? Like, you was on a def defensive mode. I think that's another thing that's frustrating. Um. I think we as men haven't been articulate enough about what we mean uh, when we say feminine, right? Because of that, I think we've allowed women to define femininity by aesthetic, by paint, right? By um, window dressing, right? She, she said, my, my hair's done, my nails are done. I got an expensive dress, I got jewelry on, I got makeup on, that's feminine, right? The, the performance is feminine. And based on that, you know, definition, drag queens are also feminine, right? Um, so, you know, th th this is a this is a point that I think men and women have to really sit down and talk about. I think especially right now because we've lost the plot when it comes to actual femininity. What's being paraded is pseudo femininity. We talk about pseudo masculinity all the time, but what's being paraded is pseudo hyper femininity. That's makeup. That's uh, consumerism. That's big ass eyelashes, long ass nails, um, overly sexual outfits, overly sexual postures and poses and disposition and even the way that you speak. Um, and, and because of that, I think men and women alike have lost the plot on, of what actually is a woman. What does a woman look like and sound like? And in what way is that different from what can be performed, right? Because now, femininity and masculinity are really primarily performance-based and uh, no, no longer essence-based, right? So I think these are things we have to highlight and talk about. No, I think you guys all look handsome. I just, I'm just very, like, this is my personality. I don't feel like I got to tone down for nobody, but I respect that you want somebody that maybe you can run over. I like that, but... But you're very handsome. I love to sleep.
And again, that goes back to the cognitive dissonance that we're talking about. Um, he doesn't like me, so he must like um, a woman that he can run over. He must like a woman who is uh, not intimidating, right? Because I'm perfect, right? So if he doesn't like me, there must be a problem with him as opposed to a deficiency in me, right? And part of the reason it's cognitive dissonance is because she doesn't even believe that, right? It's a story she has to tell herself to maintain her sanity, uh, to be able to sleep at night, et cetera, right? And, and unfortunately, like, it, it's such an insidious thing because it's there's there's a loop of confirmation, right? Her friends are hyping her up. Dudes like, you know, the, the guy in the white shirt keep her uh, useful <laughs> from a mating standpoint. So there's really no incentive to change until she hits 40, 50, and, and now has the time and the wisdom and the uh, space to consider the reality of her uh, situation and, and what her disposition has gotten her, right? But um, I, I, I actually appreciate how this, this brother handled it. You know, some brothers would say, okay, this is an opportunity to tell her like it is or, you know, go back and forth with her, but she's not receptive. At the end of the day, whatever he would have been saying, um, you know, would have simply just been for clicks and views, right? He could have at least been more honest about her not being feminine, right? He kind of took a step back there, and you'll see the other guys do it as well. Um, but as far as engaging from a, a combative place, I never recommend men do that, especially with women. Slugs. I'm from Indianapolis. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm from too. the east side of Indianapolis. Actually, I'm from. Well, maybe like, we need to link on some friendship shit. Though. Friendship. Yeah. I don't think I want to be your friend. You embarrassed me on public YouTube <laughs> with 1.5 million people. But I think that if you go home and then you mention my name, I think that you'll be presently surprised. Like I can't talk, but anyways, you'll be <laughs> pleasantly surprised. I think you would actually. I think that's also a telling part. You know, you'll be presently surprised. Um, I think maybe, you know, what she's referring to is maybe she's got some clout in the city. You know, maybe she knows the who's who's or whatever the case may be. Or uh, maybe she's, you know, a business owner, whatever the case may be. But uh, as far as attributes that men, reasonable men, are going to be interested in to to establish long-term relationship, build family and legacy. Um, based on her presentation alone, there's nothing that's going to be surprising. Unfortunately, that that's usually that's the reality, right? This is the best version of her. Uh, she knew she was going to be in front of 1.5. This video now has 1.8 million views, and this is how she chose to pre present herself: intoxicated, belligerent, um, inarticulate. <laughs> talking about dick you know in in the second sentence um brash bold that's who that's who that's who at her core unfortunately that's who she is because that's who she is um under pressure with nervousness you know and, and the whole nine and it's unfortunate like i said i would attribute it more so like being a product of your circumstance but some of these things are very, very unfortunate. So you hit me up after that. All right, I respect well, you're very handsome. I love a chocolate man. Love your dreads. You look good. I like the Jordans. 10 out of 10. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to our next guy. Your name and age and why you ended up popping. Uh, I'm Trey, 25. And I believe our, our temperaments would clash. Uh, the personalities that we have, uh, I'm not a big fan of, of drunkenness in public or okay. just the idea of, it's just how it comes across. It's not, I'm not mm -hmm. tagging you with that. I'm just saying that's how it came across at first. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's really it. I believe, I believe you're actually beautiful. Thank you. You kind of favor Glorilla, that to me. That's why Glorilla I was, is crazy. I think Glorilla is beautiful. I'm dark skin. I think more like Kelly Rowland, but I appreciate the compliment. That's, that's fine as well. Gracias. But, but that's really it. I just believe our temperaments will clash. That's okay. all. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. Is he someone that's your type? No, he's not my type. Okay, why you not? Know, I I just don't think I would like to be out on a nice dinner date or skydiving with somebody that ha wears pearls. I'm not drunk at all. A little okay. tipsy, you know, they gave us some drinks in the back, but I feel like I'm really put together. I feel like I'm carrying, carrying myself classy. 
and that you know that really doubles down on the um cognitive dissonance right she has her own story and she's unwilling to consider how um her story may not be consistent with reality right um you know because reality is a is a is a combination of not just how you perceive yourself but how you're perceived by others it's it's somewhere in that in that middle ground and um you know she feels like she's coming off as classy she feels like she's very put together uh, despite that not being consistent with the results that she's getting right and um for women watching this um if if you are or have been the woman who says you know they didn't like me because they were intimidated um they didn't like me because of something that had nothing to do with you um that very well could be the case right like, depending on where you were who the person was how you presented yourself um but part of wisdom is also being willing to hear about yourself and some of the unpleasant truths and being willing to consider like actually consider not just from a from a uh just a listening standpoint, but taking it in and considering it and comparing it to some benchmark that you have of, uh, right now the kids are saying demurity <laughs> or, or of, uh, etiquette, right? Like you have to have some standard that you're holding yourself up to that is consistent with what's going to get you the outcomes that you want. And in, in this case, and in scenarios like this, it's about attracting and retaining uh, a man of caliber. And if you haven't been able to do that, if you haven't been able to attract, or if you've been able to attract, but you haven't been able to retain, uh, you must assume that it's your fault. You must assume that it's your fault because any other assumption is just a story you're telling yourself to sleep well at night. But if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. I don't like the pants. I'm going to be honest. I think that since you're light skin, you should have wore something a little bit more, <laughs> less olive. But okay. But you're handsome, though. Thank you. Love your beard. I love the earrings. She I think the gold beard, looks. Hold on. She <laughs> called it a beard, y'all. Yeah, I think it a think, for a minute. Think, it's a beard I, now, you feel me? I think that honestly, opposites attract. So I feel like if you feel like our temperaments will clash, yeah. I feel like you should get a little bit more. <sighs> Confidence. I don't know. I That's think what you, you be doing. Some I, I think. And it, again, it speaks to that expectation, right? The expectation I, th I talked about with the other guy, where if you can't handle me, you're not man enough. And I think, unfortunately, too many of us fall for that lie, right? So, like, she she just tried to emasculate him subtly by saying, you know, you need to open yourself up and. If you're unwilling to open yourself up, maybe you're not intelligent enough, masculine enough, whatever the case may be. But it's not true, right? Um, as a man, you should be clear on what works and what doesn't. And what works for you as a partner or, you know, what would work for you as a partner and what wouldn't, right? And, and don't let anybody shame you out of uh, productive paradigms, how men and women coexist and co uh collaborate to establish legacy, right? And everything that she's demonstrated would be counter to that effort from the perspective of a man. Her ability at 27 years old to take this information back, recalibrate, get the help that she needs, whether it's psychology, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, psych, uh, psychiatry, I'm sorry. Um, and present herself differently and uh, deprioritize certain things that she sees as important, like consumerism and uh, sexual prowess and start prioritizing things that are important. Um, I think, you know, she might have a chance, but like I say all the time, most people don't change. That's the reality. So you have to, um, you have to evaluate people for what they present to you. Uh, you have to try to see past what they're presenting as well, because some people have come out here uh, might be just like her, but they presented themselves a little bit better. So you also have to have some uh, insight into uh, some of the masking techniques women use as well. At least with her, it's clear to see, you know, she's not a uh, she wouldn't be a, a good woman for a good man.
Um, but, you know, for the men, we also have to be cognizant of um, women who are just like this, but might present differently. I think that you should maybe date somebody that is more out there and get you out your comfort zone. I appreciate the input. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, handsome. Okay. Let's yeah. go over here. Mm -hmm. Your name and age, and why did you end up popping your balloon? I'm so sad. How are you doing? My name is Nazi. I'm 25 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I popped my balloon. I just didn't like the going back and forth with people. It's just not for me, that's all. Okay. But you're very pretty. You know. Gracias for the compliment. Thank you. I'm not going to say it's going back and forth. Going back and forth sounds more like an argument. I feel like you guys stated your opinions about me and how you felt. And I feel like I gave you my opinions about y'all. I don't think it's a go going back and forth. I think that we're all adults and we should respect, um, respect each other's opinions. So, I mean, if that's how you feel, that that's a red flag to me. Because imagine if we didn't agree on something and I said what I said and you said what you said. Now you feel like. I think, you know. Certain parts of Western culture are difficult sometimes to maintain consistency around. And, and specifically, I'm referring to when people say respect everybody's opinion. Um, I don't think you should respect everybody's opinion. I think some people's opinion is bullshit. I think some people, um, depending on what their opinion is, what it's framed around, um, there are some opinions that are invalid, right? If this, somebody said the sky is red, um, that's an invalid opinion. Now, whether or not I choose to go back and forth with them is, you know, how much time I got that day, or if it's if it's if I want to entertain myself. But then there are other opinions that are dangerous, right? So in in this scenario, you know, this is a woman who's incapable of being wrong, point blank, period. And because of that, she believes that everybody's opinion should be respected because hers, even when it is incorrect, should also be respected. Now, her ability to respect other people's opinions, even when they're right, is by the way. But, you know, that's usually what happens. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that when you observe these things, you know, even her uh, speaking cadence and tone. It tells you that she's a belligerent woman. It tells you that she's, if you say A, she's going to say B, right? If, whatever instruction that is given, she's going to challenge it because she feels like a woman's role in a man's life is to challenge rather than inspire, right? That's, that's, a, that's a distinction that I don't think a lot of women know how to make. Um, so, you know, I, you know, you should want a woman that challenges you. No, challenge isn't what a man needs. He needs inspiration. It's very different, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Like I'm going back and forth like a kid. No, it's just, we just disagree, but I respect that. I think you're very handsome. Your hair is curly. You look good. Thank you. I like the shirt. Where you get it from? My mama. Your mama. mom. <laughs> Bless your mom. She's a great mom. It, it's nice. It's well tailored. No, it's real Taylor. I like the gold. I like that. You you look good. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Let's go to our next guy. Mm -hmm. Your name and age, and why you ended up popping your balloon? I really want to know. Uh, yeah, my name is Key. I'm 28. Mm -hmm. uh, really, uh, to be honest, man, the physical attraction just isn't there. But I was going to give you a chance. I was going to hear you out. You know, it's not, I mean, you don't look bad at all. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you, you know, you look pretty good. But then you said you rap. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really cool with that. And all the traveling and stuff, so, like the rapping, the traveling, the mm -hmm. being out, it's just, I don't like a busy woman like that. That's too, doing a little bit too much. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's understandable. Like, pretty much, it went back and forth almost every dude up here. No. So I feel like. I think another telltale sign too, and you know, she demonstrated this with every single dude, like she's not listening. <laughs> she, she, she's genuinely not listening. She is waiting for her turn to speak. And it's evident, right? Like he hasn't even finished or landed his his plane, and she's already ready to boom, 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 boom. You can't build anything with, you can't build a friendship with this type of individual because they're never going to know you, right? They're only going to care about you knowing them. They're only gonna care about defending their position, uh, maybe invalidating your positions, but ultimately nothing actually moves forward with this type of individual because they're not taking things in. They just believe that they're, place in the world is to put things out, right? Again, that first player energy, 
uh, pop psychology will call it narcissism, which is usually overlooked in women. But like these are some of the telltale signs you start to see. And the fact that because of attraction, sexual attraction, physical attraction, we still as men choose to entertain these women, um, it continuously validates how they behave and how they think they're allowed to behave, unfortunately. Kind of a little argumentative a little bit. So like, I can see us being out on a date and you going back and forth with a waiter because something ain't cooked right. Or, like, wow. So you think I uh, disrespect uh, civilians and people that serve other people and do their job? These dudes civilians. They're civilians, but they all gave their opinion on me and what they didn't like about me and I gave my opinion about back. But I'm just saying it was real, like it was, it was pretty strong. Like it wasn't it's really, I'm not saying you don't have class, but I'm just saying it wasn't like classy, like how you. That's what he's saying. She doesn't have class. Um, like I said, I, I feel, I feel sad for her more than anything. Like I, I don't feel anger towards her. I feel sad, right? If you have become comfortable in 27 years with your brain working a certain way, it's very hard to change that. Right. And the way that her brain works is I'm right. I'm righteous and everybody else is wrong. And the better job I do of trying to let them know how or why, uh, the more valid I am in my righteousness. And unfortunately in our community, I think a lot of women have that disposition, but, um, yeah, you know, when y'all get a chance, go watch this episode. There were other people that were interesting. Shoot. The whole show was interesting. I could do a reaction to every single episode of this show, but this one jumped out to me uh, more particularly, but I'll leave y'all with this, man. Um, we as men validate the women we claim to not like, right? Because they might look good, because they might have titties, ass, a face, a uh, good pussy, whatever the case may be. We keep them thinking that it is our fault, that they are not finding the mates and the relationships that they believe they deserve, right? But what would happen if when we are encountered with these types of women, it's an immediate dismissal? Right. What would happen if the number of the, the dude in white, uh, those type of men in our community diminish the number of men who believe that their masculinity is validated by their ability to uh, ride wild stallions? What, what happens if we del delete and d decrease that number? All right. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, our dysfunction is interlinked. Right. And it's not just going to be men who have to fix things or women who have to fix things. We both have to fix things. And we both in particularly have to fix, I'm sorry, in particular have to fix how we validate each other's bullshit. So yeah. Um, yeah. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, subscribe, like, see y'all in the next one. Peace.